We also might maybe want to know where are the emitters, because we can say where are the emitters, then we can go and do something about them. So where in this, this is an oil field with little emitter sources, so pinpointing them. So you've got to run these huge climate models. They get you two or three runs, and then you, you, you can't really do that very much with them. But fortunately, uh, ML to the rescue, right? So ML runs really, really fast once it's properly trained. It's basically just multiplication once you've built the algorithm. Uh, and multiplication, computers have been good at forever and ever and ever. Now, the problem has been that ML has been really good at multiplication, and incredibly good at recognizing cats, but like these physics problems of fluid dynamics and climate modeling, it's really fallen on its face traditionally. Uh, fortunately, um, the last few years are seeing a real revolution in this. So I, I think Fourier neural operators are cooler than large language models because top is fluid dynamics traditionally, bottom is what we're doing uh, with ML surrogate models. And the end goal of that is we've sh people have shown like a 45,000 speed up in these weather models, which means you can actually understand will an individual city likely see a heat wave event? You can start to do predictive weather modeling. So of course to get there and you expand this to other problems, we need data. You know, bad data, little data, you're sad climate scientists, a lot of data, you're really happy and you know, that goes through it.